Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. And today you join me doing a completely different type of episode. So as you may have seen in my last video, I have gotten the new DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And I'm recording the video on it right now. And I'm also using the mic that you see here in regards to which is the wireless. And I'm going to record a full breakdown on the menu structure. I'm going to use this mic as well so you can get an idea of what the sound is like but already the picture quality looks absolutely phenomenal. The features that are within this are really really nice as well so I'm excited to start using it but I want to take you through all the menu structures so you get an idea of what to expect when you get yours. So let's go. So I want to take you through what's on the main screen. So starting on the right hand side you have your battery meter with your battery percentage. Next to that you have your glamour filter. On the top left you have the remaining time left in your SD card to record at the current settings that you have. Here is where you can zoom. This is where you can flip the camera around. That's the recording frame rate currently. And down here as well is where you can change into the different camera modes. Now. What I'd like in relation to here is the ease of use. So when you swipe down, you are given these eight icons. And then the first icon, that is where you can save all of your custom profiles that you can set up and have easy access to. In the next that you have here, you have the screen and rotate capture. So what that means is that when you turn on the Osmo, you can either do one of a few things. It can go straight to hyperlapse, it can go to, to low light, or it can turn on normal, or it can record. Next we have screen brightness and as you can see it's quite bright but with the simple touch of your finger you can change that to as how bright you want it. On the next hand side here is your selfie button so in regards to when you're recording if it focuses on you so it's face tracking. On the bottom right you've got your different gimbal modes so in FPV mode camera rotates freely and follows the device movement. Next is tilt locked if you want to be able to be creative in regards to how you're moving the gimbal. And then follow, which is the one that most people will use, is that it will follow your face. The next is how fast you want it to turn. Do you want it to go slow? Do you want it to go really, really fast or on default? So for me, I'm going to leave it on default because default is going to be the easiest space for me to, speed for me to be able to use. After that here, you can set it up that you can have it on landscape when it turns on. You can have it on portrait and that switches as well, by the way, to 3K resolution. So the camera doesn't turn the top, it changes the uh, pixels. And then the final is that it goes to automatic. So for me, I'm going to leave it in landscape or probably put it back into automatic. It depends, but entirely up to you what you want to do. And in here is where you get a lot of the different controls. So one is on your microphone. So you can connect two microphones onto this. You can set up your monitor volume for listening to this. And there's also a number of items as well that you can do here. So you can turn off the LED. You can have vibration, which is very, very helpful. Audio to video sync. You can have low cut. You can have 32-bit floating. And more importantly as well, you can format the transmitter. So each transmitter can record directly and it can record up to 8 gig of data. Next is when you turn on the camera, what gimbal it's going to go for. Is it going to go to forward? Is it going to go to backwards? Or the last setting that you were set up on. Here is when you rot rotate the screen, it will either turn the camera immediately off or it will go off in 2 seconds or in 10 seconds. Here is selfie flip. So when we look at the camera at us, it's going to be a mirror image. Where you can take that is to flip that so it looks more natural. After that is the connections if you want to connect it into your uh, computer or even onto your phone. And a wireless connection. So setting up wirelessly, it will connect into the Mimo app. So you no longer have that little connection that you normally needed before on the Osmos to connect onto your phone. Wearable mode is if you wanted to have it as FPV, so you can get a little adapter, it's like a cage that you put on, and then you can actually wear it in wearable mode. Next is gimbal calibration. So if you wanted to be able to make sure the gimbal was working correctly, put on a flat surface and click on that. Joystick speed, so you can say, okay, how fast do you want it to zoom, or how fast do you want it to turn within the gimbal. Video compression, so here is uh, H.264 or you can have it HEVC. Uh, that really works when you start going into the uh, log modes, which I'll get to shortly. Next is sounds, so we can actually turn the sounds completely high, medium, we can have it low, or you can turn all the sounds off if you don't want any sounds that are on. For me, I'll leave it on medium for now. 
Here is you can have a grid, so you can turn a grid on on the screen, just like your rule of thirds, and you're breaking your, your screen into nine, uh, which I find very handy from a photography point of view. Anti-flicker, so you've got two options here between 50 hertz and 60 hertz, and you can have it on auto. Time code, if you're using multiple cameras and you want to make sure that they're all synced, you can set up your time code here so that when you're importing that, it's very easy then to be able to reset, to, to set all the files together. Naming management, if you wanted to have your own custom names in relation to how the files are stored, you can go in here and you can change that. You can save power, so your screen off time when recording. So you can have it to go off after three seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, 10 minutes, or never. So I prefer to have the screen on so I can see exactly what it's recording. But if you want to turn it off, that's where you can do it there. Having more power saving is auto power off, so you can have it off in 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or 30 minutes. For me, I'm gonna leave it at the default, which is auto off in five minutes. You can turn the LED, which is on the front of the unit, on or off via here. You can also live stream with this unit, so if you wanted to go back in to continue from the last live stream, you can go in there. And then you can also set your language, which is English, or you can also then as well swipe your SD card from here. If you really wish, you can go into your full factory reset and reset everything back to factory settings. And then we've got specific device info and compliance info. So that's everything within that menu and there's a lot of detail within that overall menu as well. So if we come back out of that with a simple swipe up, we go back into our main mode. And after that, we can then go to the right hand side and we can have our glamour effect, which we turn on or off. If you turn it on, you get more control to that when you're in the Mimo app. And then you can also go into your pro settings. So if you go into your pro settings here, this is where you've got a lot more control. So you can change your exposure manually. So you can increase your uh, shutter speed. You can have it underexposed or overexposed. You can also see your ISO. And it's interesting that your ISO can go down as low as 50, um, which is very, very good for me in relation to quality of video. So most people, I think, will keep this and stick this in auto. So for now, I'm going to leave that in auto and it will change between 50 and 3200. On the uh, glamour effects, like I said, you just go into the DJI MIMO app, which is handy because you can connect that wirelessly. And this is then when we start going really into the details. So we can change the color profile from normal to a 10 bit log. And then we can also as well be able to really grade those color images when we're in uh, post. Focus, we've got a number of different options here. So we can have continuous autofocus. We can have it to go to single, so it'll fix on that and it's suitable for capturing motionless subjects. And then finally, we can go on to product showcase, which is a new thing now that's added into these cameras. I've used it before. It's very interesting to be able to hold the product up and it'll immediately focus on that product. Here, we can adjust the quality of the image so we can have increase the sharpness or decrease, and we can also do the same with noise reduction. So very handy to be able to have all of those pro features within the camera settings. Now, additionally as well now, if we go back into pro, we can then click on the icon for the microphone. So we can set that up to have it in manual, uh, so it can be stereo or mono, we can have wind noise reduction on or off, and then we can change the direction of the microphone. So this can go to front, you can have it on front and back, or you can have all the microphones on because this has fully stereo microphones built in to the unit. So that's the details within the pro section here. And if you come back out of that, you'll then be able to go back into the main screen. Swiping up, that gives you the different options to change your resolution. So you can go from 1080p to 2.7K to 4K, and you can change your frame rate as well from 24 to 60. So this is very interesting that you can do the different frame rates, and you can also hit that button on the right-hand side, and you can change your aspect ratio from 1 to 1 or to 16.9. Here we can go into our different modes. So if we click on this button here and we go to the left, we're able to do a panorama. If we go back again, we can go into photo mode, video mode, low light mode, which is very interesting as well because it has a great capability and I can't wait to actually use that. 
we go back in again, we can go into slow motion. And with slow motion, we get a number of options that we can then change. So right now it's set at 1080p, and it's eight times slow motion speed, which is uh, two, uh, 240 frames per second. Next we go to 4K, that can go 120, or you can change that as well to 100. And it's really flexible now to be able to do the higher qualities. 2.7K, you've got 120. And then if you drop down to resolution again, you can go 240. For now, I'm going to leave it at 4K 120. And then over on the far right of that, you've got your time lapse. So I think time lapse is going to be very interesting because with that, you can go in here and you can decide what you want to have in relation to the speeds that are there. And you can set all your permutations in relation to that, how long you can record and what's left on your SD card. Here is where you will flip the camera around. Again, we see on the top right hand corner where the uh, battery level is. I'm going to bring it back now into video. We're at 4K 60 and very, very straight forward. Hitting on the battery, you see that we have 100% in the actual unit. And then we also have 87% in the do it all handle, which is what comes with the creator combo. So you can charge this on the fly and you don't need to worry about running out of power. So I hope you enjoyed that full breakdown on the menu structure. If you have any questions or if I've missed anything, please do leave me a comment below and I'd love to be able to help you and answer those questions. So thank you as always for watching. If it's your first time on the channel, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, Schlange Fall.